Hello and welcome back, my champions of Melk, to another Dark Souls 3 PvP video. So, I've been getting a bunch of very good ideas from a few of y'all. First off was Tommy F, who was talking about the Philianor's Chime. That is a new Miracle Catalyst added in the DLC. Its gimmick is that it extends the range of helpful healing or buff miracles and lets you get your co-op mates a little bit easier in those AoEs. But the really cool thing it does that I did not know about was that the weapon art, it's sort of like the normal chime weapon arts, which give you that passive regen. However, with the Filionor chime, you do not have to keep the chime in your hand in the active slot. You can do other things and still keep that regen applied, and it will stack with other regen. So that was a really cool addition. I'm not sure I can fit it on this build because of the 18 faith requirement and it was hard enough getting to 15. I feel like I really want more endurance, I really want more entombment, and I really want those three points of faith, but not sure I can fit them. However, it's something I'm really considering and y'all should definitely consider too. That seems like a really useful weapon art. Next up was a very cool tip from Soul Glacius. And if you are not subbed to his channel yet, you really should go over there and check it out. He does some his videos keep getting better and better, and now there's sort of like this awesome demon baby between only Afro and a font. Just full of weeby goodness, full of good memory, uh, and full of good gameplay. And he suggested that I try the Preacher's Arm. Now the Preacher's Arm is another new catalyst. It looks really weird. It's like the arm of a demon vampire zombie. And uh, what you do with it is you cast spells. And it's a little bit weaker than the old Court Sorcerer Staff, the Logan Cat, but it does have a very, very cool weapon art. And you'll see in a little bit here, oftentimes when I'm fucking around and I accidentally use the Staff buff weapon art here, it can cost you big time. So it might be helpful for me, being a, a rusty bad, to try out that weapon art. I could use it by accident when people are in my face and, and not be punished as hard <laughs> maybe but it also looks really fun to mash people with a laser twig it seems like a very cool catalyst that preacher's arm despite the lower spell buff i think i could find some use for it and for any casters that do not have decent melee capability it's definitely something to pay attention to because it is a pretty good attack and it scales purely off of intelligence the next point was made by Bart Snipstom, and he was talking about how Old Moonlight, that spell right there, if I'd landed that cleanly, could have comboed into R1s for my weapon. Now, he learned this, and I learned this from a cool channel called Games for Days. I've watched one video over there, and it was awesome, and suggest you check out that channel too. But the really big takeaway was that he was comboing Old Moonlight into the Moonlight Greatsword R1s, two of them, one-hand R1s. I was not getting that consistently. I tried the combo using a straight sword for a little bit, the Lothric Knight Sword, which I went back to. My old baby, it got buffed. Sort of incidentally with the Sharp Infusion buff, it is a really good weapon on this build, or the Spell Sword, Cell Sword. Uh, but it was not always <clears throat> comboing into two R1s following a good hit of that old Moonlight. So, not 100% sure if you can get both R1s after the old Moonlight, but I was definitely getting guaranteed one R1 with both my straight sword and a scythe. So I'm going to keep looking at how to get that spell weapon combo to be as useful as possible, and hopefully step in quite as uninformed and scrubby. <laughs> Fortunately, I got a good rematch with this guy. So, the hyper armor of this build, the quick rangey attacks, the ability to whip punish very well at range with the homing soul mass, the ability to harry your opponents. This build can do a lot. It can even heal, uh, but it is all about timing those things properly, and I really time that weapon art about as poorly as it gets there, just like I time that roll. <laughs> so, it's a fun to have a jack-of-all-trades build, but the key is making sure you bring the tool to the table that your opponent is giving you the best opportunity to use against them. So with an Ultra, it's really not a good idea to use that weapon art a lot with one exception, using it to roll punish 
and land nice little milky combos with that weapon art. However, you don't want to be throwing it from neutral towards an ultra user. You'd want to be using those one hand R1, space them out. They're pretty quick, they got pretty good range. But with that homing soul mass up, like with the spell sword, cell sword, your options change significantly and get a lot wider. Next up will be a video or two. I'm going to be trying to play around in the Brawl playlist and see how this character meshes in the 2v2 arena mode is what I'm really excited for at first. Then I'll probably try the free-for-alls or some of the others, but the 2v2 seems like a really cool uh, mode where there can be some strategy involved. It's not just going to be complete chaos, but it also has plenty of chaos since there's going to be four players all fucking up other up so looking forward to that hope you are too and i will also be looking more at old moonlight the spell combo opportunities the best ways to use it trying to get good at free aiming and probably going to do a caster academy for that one because that is a super cool super unique spell hope you're looking forward to that hope you stay milky and thank you again to bart tommy and soul for the tips